We're told the graph of the linear function f is shown in the xy plane above. We see that there. The graph of the linear function g, not shown, is perpendicular to the graph of f and passes through the point 1, comma, negative 5. What is the value of g of negative 2? Pause this video and see if you can work through this before we do this together. All right. Now one technique we can do is just try to figure out the equation of g. So we're going to have g of x is going to be in the form the slope times x plus the y-intercept. So first of all, let's think about what the slope is going to be. And if g is perpendicular to f, that means that g's slope is going to be the negative reciprocal of f's slope. So what is f's slope? Well, it looks like for every 3 we move to the right, we move up 1. Every 3 we move to the right, we move up 1. Or when the change in x is equal to 3, the change in y is equal to 1. We know that slope is change in y over change in x. So here the slope is 1 third. Let me write that down. If we were actually taking the SAT, you wouldn't write it down, take the time, but we might as well over here. Slope is equal to 1 third. So what's m going to be for g? Well, it's going to be the negative reciprocal of that. So we could say g of x is going to be the negative reciprocal of 1 over 3 is negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3x plus b. Now we need to figure out b. Well, luckily, they give us a point over here, 1 comma negative 5. So we know that when x is equal to 1, so negative 3 times 1 plus b, then g of 1 is negative 5. So this is going to be equal to negative 5. And so we can solve for b. Negative 5 is equal to negative 3 plus b. And so we can add negative 3 to both sides, or sorry, we can add 3 to both sides, and we are going to get negative 2 is equal to b. Add 3 to both sides, this cancels, and then you get negative 2. And so now we know the equation for g. g of x is equal to negative 3x minus 2. And now we just go back and say, all right, then that means g of negative 2 is going to be negative 3 times negative 2 minus 2. Well, that is 6 minus 2, which is equal to 4. And we are done. Now, there's other ways that you could approach this. You could say if the slope of g is negative 3, and if we start at 1 comma negative 5 and we're trying to get to negative 2, let me write it this way. If we have x and g of x, and we know when x is 1, g of x is negative 5, and we want to figure out what about when x is equal to negative 2. Well, to go from 1 to negative 2, you need to subtract 3. So if the slope is negative 3, that means on this side right over here, negative 3 times negative 3, you're going to have to add 9. And so negative 5 plus 9 is 4. That's another way that you could have approached this.